Nigeria's Presidential Election Petition Tribunal sitting in Abuja has tasked councils to the aggrieved political parties to harmonize their petitions, attend to questions arising from their applications, and harmonize necessary documents needed for the duration of the tribunal sitting. This was, of course, as the tribunal adjourned its sitting to today and tomorrow, May 10th, for the continuation of the pre-hearing proceedings. Our correspondent, Amadine Uyi, monitored the session yesterday and now reports. The pre-hearing session was filled with representatives of agreed political parties. Also visibly in attendance was the candidate of Nigeria's opposition Labour Party, Peter Obi. The session commenced in earnest as councils to political parties present made their presence known. Representatives of some of those aggrieved took time to explain their petitions to the tribunal. About eight judgments told INEC that this man standing beside me is the national chairman of the party and not any other person. Two federal high courts told INEC that they must deal with the list he submits and upload them as candidates in the election. INEC ignored all the others, including the others of the Court of Appeal, which said the man you are dealing with is not even a member of the party. Our party, Action Alliance, was neither challenging emergency of Aswa Jubala Ahmed Tinubu, nor the victory of APC in this instance. But protesting the process adopted by the umpire, INEC, building up to the election. The respondents in our petition, which includes Bola uh, Ahmed Tinubu and APC, the, he, he, he in person is not qualified in the first place to contest for the election. This is the integrity of our petition and exactly what transpired in court there is just the pre-hearing session that we had today. While the Action Alliance withdrew his petition from the tribunal, following talks with Nigeria's electoral body, several councils present expressed confidence that the tribunal will live up to the high expectations from citizens. The court committed itself to cooperate and ensure that uh, these petitions are expeditiously dealt with. And on our part, all the lawyers for all the parties also uh, committed themselves to cooperating with the tribunal, the court, to make sure that uh, these matters are dealt with urgently. The decision to be rendered will impact on Nigeria's electoral jurisprudence, judicialism, and constitutionalism. It's very, very important that this is, this, is, this is made known, because one way or the other, I do not think that it will be business as usual. The presiding justice urged the various councils to attend to the questions and counter questions arising from the petitions sent to the tribunal. This is necessary to set the ground running for the commencement of the hearing after the pre-hearing proceedings. Amadin Uyi, reporting for News Central. Now to speak further on this, we have joining us on the studio political analyst and executive director, Lead Network Africa, Chukuma Okinwa. Good morning and thank you for joining us. Yeah, good morning. All right, let's start with your thoughts on day one of the... Uh, election tribunal which of course started yesterday we've seen several updates on social media and in the media as well and we've also seen that there have been concerns about this um, i mean the, the the lead judge had urged the courts and the judges to go straight to the point and not to waste anybody's time but as we've seen with previous election petition tribunals a lot of them are fraught with frivolities is that expected you know in in this particular tribunal well let me build on the thoughts of the council to p2b who said that we expect that this year's, uh, you know, this particular edition is not going to be business as usual. And I think the judiciary has a daunting task. You know, before the build-up of the elections, there was so much hope on our neck, which our neck quashed with a lot of irregularities. The only hope and last hope now to really give Nigeria some level of deserving confidence in the system is for the judiciary to step up and live up to his expectation and ensure that the hope that the people have on it, at this very daunting task, it does, it's not trashed to the ground. 
All right. So, so also, like, like you've seen day one so far. What are your thoughts? Would you say that, you know, did you expect how things have turned out? Are you impressed, you know, from day one so far? Yeah, certainly. I think with this uh, pre-hearing phase, asking all agreed parties to put their thoughts together, gather all the relevant documents, right? Yes. You know, to be able to like, you know, get real deep into the into the business. It's it's commendable and it's the right step to to go in. And I think at this particular phase, it might be too early to really assess the process. Uh, how be it at this particular point, I would say that we, I am impressed and many Nigerians are. All right. Uh, we have Osage Boma who's also joining us uh, as a part of this conversation. Osage? Yeah, I, I, I want to ask, you know, about, you know, generally a lot of Nigerians, you know, would reflect on 2019. There was, of course, uh, a small legal battle after the 2019 elections by the PDP um, against the APC. Of course, you know, the, the court ruled you know, kind of in favor of the APC. Um, so I want to ask, you know, about the faith that Nigerians have today in 2023 on the strength of the judiciary to, you know, to give a ruling um, that will be, that will be seen as just and fair and, um, you know, and, and, and the right thing has been done by Nigerians across the country. Honestly, I think uh, it will take a lot of moral will and also like uh, the, the commitment uh, to professional ethics. I know that the, the, the battle is stronger now. Uh, politicians are more desperate. There will certainly be pressures on our side. Uh, but this is the, 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 the kind of commitment they have made as judiciary to the nation to ensure that they are not just the, the last hope of the common man, but of all Nigerians. And especially when it comes to the issue of both the power brokers and, of course, the powerful people of the society, which are the politicians. So who would expect them to defile every form of uh, attempts of financial inducement or maybe like said influence? Because we must understand that nobody has any influence or, or funds that is not from the nation. When politicians want to induce you with funds, it is certainly public funds. And of course, the influences they wield, whether as uh, 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 incumbents or the rest, is also given to them by the constitution. So having understood that, you also know that you are empowered constitutionally to do your own role. So when they are playing their own role, it doesn't mean their own role is uh, you know, better or should be more esteemed than your own. So you do your own and you get accepted and get the credit of the nation. Um, also, let's talk about you know, the expectations. We know that they'll be sitting today, Wednesday, uh, uh, 2 p.m., I believe. Uh, what, what should we expect or what do you foresee are the expectations for today? Well, we expect like a build-up uh, from what happened yesterday, uh, perhaps more ratifications uh, based on the recommendations from the judiciary, uh, so that, we, you know, the, the, the progress actually is expected to be speedy, uh, you know, based on uh, the new Electoral Act 2022. Uh, it shouldn't be, an, and I mean, it's it needless to even have like a process that would delay sometimes uh, one year you know, into like a new administration. That is needless. But whatever be the case, we should not expect that uh, a speedy process would also mean um, haphazard, maybe right. not thorough. I mean, let them judge by it based on the facts that is before the court. There have yeah. also been concerns that have been raised about the absence of the president-elect at the, pres at the um, election, the pre-hearing of, of the tribunal. And, you know, there have been concerns that have been raised based, you know, on the fact that he was not also present in a lot of the debates that were held pre the elections. Do you think that this is something that one should worry about? It shouldn't be a concern. His presence is not needed. As a matter of fact, his presence might even be seen as uh, maybe having um, a special interest in a particular uh, candidate. So let's leave the court to do their, their process. All right. Uh, I, I, I want to, you know, you mentioned, you know, that it, you, hopefully it's a speedy process, you know, but. Of course, we all know that the um, um, president-elect has the right of appeal, and of course, it's going to go all the way to Supreme Court, um, I believe. So that, that of course, is one of the uh, things with Nigeria's justice system that maybe needs to be to be checked. You know, the length, the amount of time that it would take to go from appeal to Supreme. You, you know, and, and you know, the president is currently in office, and you can't do anything about it. You know, it's pretty much the same thing that would be happening with, um, you know, well, anyway, that's a different case. Um, so let's talk about, you know, that part, you know, and do you think that it's important that we start to make those adjustments as quickly as possible? 
to reduce the amount of time that is take uh, that is taken you know by the judicial process and also maybe agree with those who say these things should be concluded before anybody is sworn in well the two ways to read this even if we decide to ensure that uh, the process is completed uh, before the, uh, the person is sworn in, does it change the judiciary? Does it change the Supreme Court? How about uh, if the judiciary, if uh, the Supreme Court uh, decides to obtain the judgment of uh, the tribunal, which in this case is acting like the appellate court, a court. So that means that whoever they want uh, still stands. So, but I think the, the core more should be uh, to look at a situation where, like all the needed reforms, I mean, the lawyers can lead these, the Judicial Council, to ensure that the rule, the constitutional rule that is expected of the judges that they play that. I mean, the, the only way you can actually, that what I consider as the acid test for a lawful nation is that if politicians do whatever thing they do the way they like it, they can be assured that once it gets to the court, justice will be served, justice will be delivered. And once that is granted, nobody will want to like engage in impunity. But a lawless nation is that that I mean, whatever you, you do, do you do the things that are not acceptable before the law, and you are sure that you have a judiciary that will back you up. And like I said, something which is very important. You know, in a nation where you have like judges, you know, that are good willed, they, they they have integrity as uh, you know, as a watchword. Even if you are Mr. President, you are not above the law. The rule of law simply means that everybody is under the law. And once the law empowers you to decide when it comes to like controversial issues such as elections, then you owe nobody any explanation. All right. Um, let's also you know, talk about uh, some of the conversations that have been raised, especially as regards people's access to this. I mean, I like, because we haven't asked you, I'd like to hear your thoughts on the possibility of these tribunal being streamed live, televised live you know, for Nigerians to watch. Also, if we look at the past election tribunals, are there lessons that we maybe might pick from the past ones to ensure that, you know, we have a smoother run this year? Well, I think restreaming uh, that, that process is reasonably expected. It's been advocated for. I mean, is there anything to hide? This is a matter where every Nigerian is a stakeholder when it comes to electoral matter, matters. Every Nigerian that is up to 18 years, was part of the interview process. So we want to know, how is it that perhaps uh, people that were interviewed and validated uh, is not the ones that we have like a match on the list? So, I mean, the better, uh, more, the more transparent the process it is, is, the more opportunity the judiciary has to actually tell Nigerians that, see, this is why we took this decision, and it's in the best interest of the nation, whichever way it goes. I mean, there will be that confidence to say, I mean, if you also apply that process like in INEC, one of the beautiful things about the, you know, the things, many things, guidelines INEC said was the fact that the results can be viewed in real time. Absolutely. I mean, all Nigerians are stakeholders when it comes to electoral matters. So this is not like maybe for those that, I mean, the, the essence of having few of us study law does not mean only them is expected to be lawful, or to have access, you, are, you, are, you can't break the law and you say, oh, I'm not a lawyer. Ignorant of the law is not an excuse. And of course, you don't also need to be a lawyer for you to be a lawful citizen. Okay, and um, you know, today, the, I think it's the PDP's case that would be heard today, uh, while the Labour Party's case will be held, um, they'll be heard rather tomorrow. Um, you know, they both have almost similar uh, cases that they filed against the APC and of course, uh, INEC uh, and, and, and all of that. Um, but one thing that I also saw was that they, I think the, the tribunal had mentioned that technicalities would not be too, you know, much allowed, you know, in you know, all of this process. But we've seen some court rulings that stunned Nigerians. And, you know, I once again refer to 2019. I also refer to the Imo State example, uh, where, of course, uh, Governor, Governor Hope Uzodima, you know, suddenly moved from fourth position, I believe, to first uh, position. Um, I, I want you to talk about how risky it is for the, if, if any, you know, the peace and stability of the country, if this justice or the judgment is seen to be, you know, not, not as, as pure as it should be. Well, it's, it's, it's going to also entirely depend 
on the candidates, those presidential candidates, uh, like we were able to prove for the very first time, if you monitor, if, if you look at the post-electoral violence, this, this year's election, is the least in a row. We've had situations where maybe like up to 8,000 lives, 11,000 lives were lost uh, just because the candidates involved came up to say, oh, we, we didn't accept the results. The process was flawed. It's, it's, it's fake and we can't accept this. This is the time to redeem our victory. This is the time to reclaim our mandate. And guess what? You see the citizens uh, go to the street protesting and then lives are being lost. So I believe that if after that uh, particular process, and there's any way of getting uh, the major candidates, you know, um, convinced that um, they should accept the process, and they come up to say, you know what, Nigerians, uh, it's true, we, we, it didn't go the way we expected, uh, but the court is supreme, right? Let's respect the judgment of the court. Oh, then no. certainly, that no. will mean that um, uh, 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 nothing is going to happen. But yeah. if, on the contrary, they speak otherwise, then of course, uh, yeah, can, nobody can, can I, actually can I also estimate chip in and you know, ask you about you know, a, a, a case in Enugu. It's, it's still a developing case with the Labour Party and, of course, the PDP's uh, candidate. There's many you know, um, uh, stories that are emanating from Enugu State you know, with, you know, I think it was NYSC results to, um, or certificates to different other things. Uh, can you give us updates on what's going on there and you know, how the Labour Party is also maybe approaching, if possible, uh, approaching the court? Okay, I think uh, at the moment, uh, since all concerned parties have been able to, especially like uh, Labour Party, has, has placed their case on the table as well as uh, backed up by APGA, uh, we are we looking at the court to see uh, how the whole process turns out. Uh, Labour Party cited the instance of the NYSE certificate and uh, they also uh, pointed to a possibility uh, that PDP did not win the election. Uh, but then it's up uh, for the court to decide. Uh, but at the moment, they feel in Enugu. Uh, uh, currently, Enugu is like gearing up for, uh, especially those that have the sentiment for PDP, preparing for the swearing exercise. But on the blogosphere, on the social media space, it's like attack back and front. It's like a social media war. Uh, it does appear that many people who have sentiments uh, for either side either think that the victory can either be sustained uh, through social media war and attacks, or maybe like it can be obtained uh, through social media wars and attack. Uh, so it's only when the court declares and says, okay, this certificate is real or not real, uh, then those of us who are third parties in this particular matter can say, okay, this is real or this is not real. And that, that also comes back to the fact why the courts must live up to their responsibilities to the nation as the place of truth, not just a place of technicalities. All right. Um, the Nigerian Labour Congress has warned that they will build a hall of shame for irresponsible judges. I'm sure that you've maybe had some time to look through the judges' list. I'd like to know what your thoughts are on the judges who have been appointed you know, to be a part of the tribunal. Uh, are you impressed with the list? Do you have any concerns? And do you think that Nigerians in general, like the larger population, are also comfortable with the judges who are on the list? Well, they are judges, and they qualify to be on that list. I mean, they were not made judges just immediately, I mean, you know, because there is a work to be done. They are judges before now, and they qualify to be on that tribunal. So what we're expecting them to do is let your qualification speak for itself, right? And uh, I think what the Labour Congress can do more is to charge them to do their duties, right? Conscientize them rather than like, oh, we are going to build a hall, a hall of uh, shame. Uh, that probably may not be necessary now because that sounds more like a threat. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, what we expect is conscientize them the more, demand for it, and without even in any way suggesting because it's more or less like, oh, fine, if it doesn't go the way we want it, then, of course, we build a hall of shame. Right. Yeah, because, like I mean, you are not the one to decide. So, so, so perhaps it does appear like Labour or Congress may have already have like a way they want the case to go. And if it doesn't go that way, then it's certain that uh, maybe uh, the court didn't live up to these expectations and have to be, uh, maybe those judges have to be reserved, a space have to be reserved for them in the Hall of Shame. Interesting. Well, judge, uh, justice must not just be done, but must be manifestly seen to be done by all. I don't know in this case if it will be seen to be done by all, or at least let's say the majority 
of Nigeria. So let's take the conversation, you know, away from the election tribunal to talk about what's happening in Ogun State. The Supreme Court is set to hear the case of Governor Osho State, I beg your pardon. The Supreme Court is set to hear the case of Governor Ademola Adeleke and Adeboe Gawetola over the duly elected governor and the winner of the Oshun gubernatorial election of July 16, 2022. Today, recall that Adeleke of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, was declared the winner by the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC. Now, uh, challenging the victory at a tribunal led by Justice Tessa Kume uh, led, which sat in Oshogbo, Adegbo Ega Oyetola of the All Progressive Congress, APC, was uh, uh, pronounced a duly elected governor against the declaration of INEC. But the appeal court, in a judgment by Justice Mohamed Chaibu on March 24, 2023, declared Adeleke as the returned, uh, returned rather as the authentic winner. Adeleke and the PDP are cross appealing the decision of the Court of Appeal, aligning the certified true copy, the legitimacy of the Bimodo vet, uh, Voter Accreditation System, BVAS relied upon by the APC and the date of the certified true copy. So it's it's um, it's ongoing drama, of course, you know, uh, uh, Demola Adelike did, of course, you know, um, has, of course, you know, since the election uh, carried on as governor of the state and, uh, you know, as governor-elect of the state and, of course, has been praised and also criticized in one way or the other. But um, it's not fully his yet until the Supreme Court decides um, what do you expect uh, today? What do you expect will be the outcome today? Uh, well, I think at, at, at this particular phase, we, the case will still be uh, quite preliminary. Uh, but then, uh, I think it's going to be like a build-up to the conversations that has been happening outside of the courts. And uh, the whole thing is still going to um, be founded on the Beavers, the IRF, you know, whether there were cases of overvoting in some regions or whether there were no cases of overvoting. Uh, but then also, like, one thing I, I want to believe in, especially in that particular case, because it's very sensitive, would be that if you want to prove that there was overvoting in certain regions, the court also should be able to listen and look at other regions, maybe in the state and local government, to be able to validate there were also not cases of overvoting. Because what we see sometimes happening in Nigeria... It's a situation where, you know, two political parties try to, like, outsmart themselves, right? So you see someone, like, trying to point an accusing figure in certain areas, saying, you know, there was overvoting there. So the scrutiny should be evenly distributed, right? right? And uh, th that also, like, at this particular point, you know, why we also need to begin to look at the technicalities behind the B vice and the IRF. In fact, yes. I, it's important that you mention that because what we're going to see in this particular uh, year would be that a number of unprecedented matters would arise in courts because we haven't used uh, beavers or IREV. So there's so many new areas to explore as we look through the elections and as we go to courts in the different states and on the national level. But thank you so much, Okuma Okemwa, for joining us. You're welcome. All right.